Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 18th of February. 248 Wuhan evacuees discharged from Army's quarantine facility in northern India. U.S. Taliban peace agreement conditional says Afghan presidential palace. And Nepal's former speaker Mahara acquitted in attempt to rape case. And now for all the details, a group of 248 people who were quarantined and tested negative in the latest test for coronavirus were discharged from an army facility in northern India on Tuesday. They were evacuated following the coronavirus outbreak in China through a special flight earlier this month and kept under observation. A group of 248 people who were quarantined and tested negative in their latest test for coronavirus were discharged from the Indian Army facility in northern Manisar town on Tuesday. Many of these students pursuing medical courses and young professionals were under quarantine after they were evacuated following the coronavirus outbreak in China through a special flight on February 1st and 2nd. They were thrilled to be returning home after spending 17 days under observation at the medical facility. तो हम लोगों ने due precautions जो भी हम ले सकते थे वो हमने लिए। Due precautions में पूरा जो अंदर formite था, हमने जो कपड़े थे, इनके bedding ये सब, इनके हमारे पास steam disinfector थे, तो जिस with generated steam, steam is at 100 plus degrees, the invisible part of the steam, उससे हमने सारे इनके bedding every day disinfect होते थे। and the rest of the camera was fogging. We had a solution to it, so we used it. Sir, when we came here, we were scared to eat food. 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 The Indian Army, after a short notice on January 27, started setting up quarantine area for these affected students just days before the first batch was to arrive on February 1st. In the latest, more than 1,600 deaths have been reported so far in China due to the coronavirus. Moving on, at least 10 people, including two police officers, were killed in a suicide blast that hit a police vehicle in Quetta in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province on Monday. A senior police official said the suicide bomber wanted to target a rally of a religious group but blew himself up when police stopped him. Mineral-rich Balochistan province is at the center of the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor. Baloch separatists are demanding freedom from Pakistani rule as well as sectarian groups operate in the province and have staged similar attacks in the past. There was, however, no immediate claim of responsibility for the Monday's bombing. Incidents of abduction and forceful conversion of girls from religious minorities are widespread in Pakistan. Human rights activists in the United Kingdom and Karachi held a series of protests this week seeking justice for minor Hindu girl Mehak Kumari who was forcibly converted and married to a Muslim man in Pakistan's Sindh province. Human rights activists from Pakistan and members of the Indian community living in United Kingdom held protest seeking justice for minor Hindu girl Mehak Kumari who was forcibly converted and married to a Muslim man in Pakistan's Sindh province. The demonstrators holding placards protested outside Pakistan High Commission in London and called Pakistan an abuser of child and human rights and demanded justice. Mehak was abducted by middle-aged man Ali Raza from Jakobabad district of Sindh province on January 15 and reportedly forced to accept Islam. Some clerics blame Mehak of act of apostasy and are demanding that punishment. 
They accused Mehak of insulting Islam after she retracted from her previous statement in the court, where she said she had accepted Islam of her own free will. Muslim organ, uh, fanatic organizations have had a meeting there, and today the leaders of them, which are the Jamaat Islami, the Sarajul Al Haq, the Sunni Tehreek, the JUI, and the other Islamic organizations, they have reached their leaders today, so that they can conduct so that they can conduct a riot in Jakwabad so that Mehak Kumari cannot get justice. So we are raising our voice in front of the Pakistani High Commission here and we demand justice for Mehak Kumari. انسان کا فرض بنتا ہے انسانی حقوق کی خلاف فرضیاں کسی کو زور زبردستی کسی کا مجھب بدلوانا کسی کو زبردستی ٹورچر کرنا اٹھانا یہ دنیا میں جہاں کہیں بھی ہو رہا ہے نا انصافی ہو رہی ہے ارلیر پروٹسٹ ویر آلسو ویٹنسٹ ان پاکستان سپورٹ سٹی ویر میمبرز آف دی سیویل سوسائیٹی انکلوڈنگ لائیرز ڈیمونسٹریٹ ایڈ آوٹ سائیڈ کراچی پریس کلب سیکنگ جسٹس فور مہ Incidents of abduction and forceful conversions of Hindu and Christian girls are widespread in Pakistan. In the latest, a Pakistani court is yet to announce Mahak Kumari's verdict. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Monday urged the international community to step up efforts and do more for Afghan refugees while speaking at an international conference on 40 years of hosting Afghan refugees in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and UN High Commissioner for Refugees Filippo Grandi on Monday urged the international community to step up efforts and do more for Afghan refugees. Speaking at a two-day international conference in Islamabad on 40 years of hosting Afghan refugees, the UN chief lauded Pakistan for hosting millions of Afghan refugees for past four decades. The conference witnessed participation of ministers and senior officials from around 20 countries including Iran, who have been supporting the Afghan refugees across the globe. For 40 years, the people of Afghanistan have faced successive crises. For 40 years, the people of Pakistan have responded with solidarity. The generosity now spans across decades and generations. Whatever the situation might have been in the past, right now I can tell you, all of us, there's one thing we want is peace in Afghanistan. The two-day gathering came at a time of heightened anticipation of a possible peace deal between the Afghan Taliban and the United States. After four decades of war and conflict, around three million Afghans still live as refugees in Pakistan. The conference aimed to highlight the need for international support to reintegrate Afghan refugees and to help Pakistan and Iran, home to 90% of Afghan refugees, shoulder the load. Spokesperson to the Afghan President Ashraf Ghani Sadiq Sadiqi has confirmed that the US Taliban peace deal will be finalized next week and none of its article is without conditions. Sadiqi said peace is the priority of Afghan government and will be national, not on one side. Afghan Presidential Palace spokesperson Sadiq Sadiqi has said that the US Taliban peace deal is conditional and will be finalized next week. Addressing a press conference on Tuesday, Sadiqi said U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper in a meeting with President Ashraf Ghani told him that none of the peace agreement article is without conditions. Sadiqi said peace is a priority for the government and the president and our peace will be national not on one side. Meanwhile, Taliban leader Abdul Salam Hanafi said in the U.S. Taliban talks, both the sides are preparing to sign an agreement, local media reports said. The talks which started late in 2018 and continued for 10 rounds have ended now, Hanafi said. U.S. officials and Taliban representatives have announced progress with the reduction in violence plan intended to lead a signed peace deal followed by intra-Afghan negotiations and ultimately an enduring peace. In news from Nepal, a district court in Nepal on Monday acquitted former House Speaker Krishna Bahadur Mahara from attempt rape charges, reinstating him as a lawmaker in Nepal's parliament. Mahara was arrested over the charges in October last year.
The Kathmandu District Court on Monday acquitted former House Speaker Krishna Bahadur Mahara from charges of attempt to rape, reinstating his post of lawmaker in Nepal's parliament. The verdict was pronounced by a single bench of Justice Amaraj Paudel, who gave a clean chit to Mahara on grounds of insufficient evidence to prove the charge levelled against him by a parliament secretariat staffer. 61-year-old Mahara was a Speaker of the House of Representatives when he landed into the controversy after the female staffer accused him of attempting to rape her in a rented apartment in capital Kathmandu in late September last year. Mahara resigned from his post on October 1st after mounted public pressure. He was arrested by police on 6th of October and a case was registered against him. Before being released on Monday, Mahara has spent more than 100 days in custody, out of which majority was spent in the hospital claiming he was unwell. Sri Lanka has asked the United States to review its decision to impose a travel ban on the island nation's army chief, who has been accused of grave human rights abuses during the final stage of the country's civil war. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana over the weekend formally conveyed to the U.S. Ambassador Elena Tepleids Colombo's strong objections on the imposition of travel restrictions on its army chief by the U.S. government. According to a Foreign Ministry statement, Gunavardhana on Sunday asked the United States to review its decision, which he said unnecessarily complicates the U.S.-Sri Lanka relationship. He said there were no substantiated or proven allegations of human rights violations against Army Chief Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva. Sri Lankan Army Chief Silva has been accused of grave human rights abuses, including extrajudicial killings in 2009 during the final stage of the country's civil war that ended 11 years ago. The US had on Friday issued a travel ban on Silva which prohibits him and his family from entering the U.S. Silva led an army division against Tamil Tiger rebels in the final phases of Sri Lanka's 26-year-long civil war, which ended in 2009 that killed at least 100,000 people. Human rights groups have accused the division of violating international human rights laws. Preparations are in full swing in Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's home province, Gujarat, as India gears up to host U.S. President Donald Trump. Trump will take part in a grand road show and inaugurate a newly built cricket stadium with PM Modi in Ahmedabad city on his arrival on February 24th. Preparations are in full swing in Ahmedabad city of India's western Gujarat province as the country is gearing up to host U.S. President Donald Trump. Walls opposite Motera Stadium in the city on Tuesday were being painted with images of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Trump and different slogans on Clean India mission ahead of the U.S. President's maiden visit on February 24th. Posters of PM Modi and President Trump along with his wife Miliana Trump have also been put up around the city. कैच फाउंडेशन जो है वो मोदी जी के स्वच्छ भारत मिशन के साथ पिछले पांच साल से जुड़ा हुआ है जो मोटेरा के अंदर चांदखेड़ा के अंदर अहमदाबाद के काफी हिस्से के अंदर स्वच्छता और ग्रीनरी का काम करता है वो और हमने आप देखेंगे जो पेंटिंग जो की है वॉल पेंटिंग जो की है उसमें स्वच्छता के और ग्रीनरी के हमने एक मैसेज देने का ट्राई किया है Meanwhile, parts of Northern Agra, where the iconic white marble monument, Taj Mahal, is located, are also being renovated as Trump is expected to visit the city. According to officials, the route from Agra's Kheria Airport to Taj Mahal is being cleared and being given a facelift. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. 248 Wuhan evacuees discharged from Army's quarantine facility in northern India. U.S. Taliban peace agreement conditional says Afghan presidential palace. And Nepal's former speaker Mahara acquitted in attempt to rape case. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>